Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Josh and today we're going to be looking at a lens that you probably didn't even know existed and that is the Mikey 50mm f1.2 for the L mount. So Mikey actually sent me out this lens for review and there's a lot of things to love about it. So in this video I'm going to be talking about all the things that I really like about it, some of the things that I'm not too keen on and whether I think it's a worthy investment for your lens kit. What you're watching right now is actually being shot on the Mikey 50mm f1.2 mounted to my Panasonic S5 and there'll be a few more examples of the image Quality in this video. So let's just get straight into it with how much this lens is going to set you back since I know this is going to be a massive factor as to whether you're interested in this lens or not. So in the UK this lens will set you back around £260 and in the US it will set you back around $359 which is an absolute steal for a prime lens that can stop all the way down to f1.2. This lens is a manual focus only lens which means it has no communication with your actual camera body which for me makes it more so suited towards video work. So getting straight on with the things that I love about this lens and one of the things is a build quality like this thing is built extremely well. It's all metal construction throughout and there's no plastic actually present on this lens and when you get it in your hands it does feel very weighted and very premium. This lens actually weighs around 620 grams which isn't light by any means but it makes total sense considering that it's all made of metal and glass and there's no plastic present whatsoever. And also the focus throw on this lens is actually really short and I really like this because it means you're able to grab focus a lot easier than you would expect to be able to on a manual focus only lens. Um, I know that most Sydney lenses have quite a long focus throw and that's absolutely fantastic when you've got a team, you've got a focus pillar and stuff where you need to make really finite adjustments. But for me as a solo shooter, I really appreciate the shorter focus throw. This lens also has a really nice red accent ring which actually complements the S5 and the S series cameras really nicely. In fact, I think this lens looks absolutely absolutely fantastic mounts to my camera and of course that has nothing to do with the actual image quality and whether it can do the job or not but it's nice when your gear looks nice and this lens definitely does look pretty with my S5. Up on the screen right now is a short sequence that I shot with this lens and the Panasonic S5 and I've got to say I'm extremely impressed with the image quality. The video looks sharp, it looks clean, it's really nice and of course having the range of f1.2 and um, of course stopping down from there is really nice because it means that I can blow out the background and separate my subject really nicely. But also I do have to say that once you start stopping down slightly this lens does become incredibly sharp so I've got nothing but good things to say about the actual image quality and the colours coming out of this lens. As I mentioned earlier, this lens does have a very short focus throw and that for me is actually a massive plus. Um, because I was self-filming that entire sequence, it made it a lot easier for me to grab my focus really quickly so I could get the shots. So yeah, that's also a massive plus for this lens if you are someone that doesn't have a team around you or you don't want to be using focus pullers and all that sort of stuff. So even though I personally wouldn't use this lens for stills since it's a manual focus only lens, I do have to say that the stills that you can get with this lens are extremely impressive and very pleasing to the eye. Of course, having the fast 1.2 aperture makes a massive difference um, and it does really allow you to get some really nice low light shots and you know separate your subject from the background really nicely. Um, of course please be aware that when you are manual focusing however it does become a little bit harder to get the shots exactly pinpoint nailed with the focus compared to a autofocus lens um, for photo and that's probably why this lens would probably be more suited to video work for my use case anyway. However as we all know no lens is perfect and of course there are going to be some drawbacks especially with a lens that is as affordable as this one. For example, even though this lens does go down to 1.2, what I've found is that 1.2 is actually quite unusable for me and that's because I get this weird smudginess at um, f1.2 and sort of like around the space between f1.2 and 1.4 um, it completely disappears by 1.6 as you can see in this example. But yeah, I'm not too sure whether that's just my copy of the lens or not but I did notice this and for that reason I normally use it from sort of f1.6 upwards but for me that's not a massive deal breaker because f1.6 on a full frame sense is still plenty amount of background blur for me. Another drawback for me is the minimum focus distance of this lens and the minimum focus distance is 0.6 meters which for me is actually quite far away from the subject. For example, the recently announced Panasonic 50mm f1.8 has a minimum focus distance of 0.45 meters and even though there's not much in it, I could definitely notice a difference when using both of those lenses. The focus breathing on this lens is apparent, I would say. Um, I can definitely notice that sort of slight, sort of zoomy in the outy sort of thing when you are trying to grab focus from far and of course from close. Um, if you're not too sure what focus breathing is, um, give it a Google and stuff because some people absolutely hate the look of it and it can actually be quite a deterring factor for some people. Um, I don't mind focus breathing too much, especially because I don't really pull focus, you know, that drastically as such. But when using this lens, I do notice that there is some focus breathing. 
Apart from the factors I've just mentioned, I don't really have any other complaints about this lens. Uh, it's built extremely well, it looks fantastic, and it's actually really easy to use for a manual focus only lens. So yeah, I would definitely use it, like I said, on my corporate shoots for video and stuff, and it's definitely gonna be having a spot in my camera bag from this point onwards. If you're looking for a lens that's gonna be great for video work, that has extremely shallow depth of field, and is great in low light, but for not too much money, and for a full frame camera, then to be honest, I can't see anything else on the market that will compare with this. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it somewhat entertaining or useful. And if you did, then please consider subscribing to my channel because it helps me out massively. And hopefully I shall see you in my next video. Thank you.